हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई सर डॉक्टर अनुप्रीता मिश्रा एंड यू आर वॉचिंग अनुप्रीता मिश्रा इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग here i am taking up a uh, difference between the salient pole rotor construction and cylindrical rotor construction with one more difference between the two uh, this particular topic comes under uh, construction of synchronous machine and i have uh, published two videos related to this one was uh, related to stator and stator frame later i started with the difference between the rotor constructions one was salient pole rotor construction and another was cylindrical rotor construction there i have listed a 6 to 7 or maybe eight differences you just add up this difference as a next in sequence in that particular tabular format of the difference uh, this particular difference requires a separate discussion that's why i didn't take it that time and i am uh, in favor of preparing or uh, publishing the videos of small small con concepts so that you can grasp it very well so as this is requiring a separate discussion so i took it as a separate one uh, this is actually related to the uh, rotor construction impact of air gap actually impact of different rotor constructions i should say and that impact quite related to the air gap between the uh, stator periphery and rotor as i listed out there in the previous video that the uh, air gap is non uniform in case of salient pole rotor construction and it is uniform in cylindrical rotor construction so how this air gap either uniform uh, non uniform air gap or uniform air gap affects armature mmf or armature flux or armature flux density that point i am going to discuss because length of air gap totally affects the reluctance offered in the path of mmf or permeance offered in the path of the mmf so let's starts the discussion here i have drawn the, the rotor of salient pole uh, synchronous machine along with the stator periphery and showing here one winding of a phase that means this is a phase winding a a dash a a dash i am not showing b and c phase and the rotor itself is being shown as uh, salience with saliency so two poles are shown here north pole projected outside south pole projected outside so very well you can understand over here this is the uh, distance between the stator inner periphery and rotor pole tip this much similarly in between south pole and the stator periphery is same, same of same quantity this is your polar axis so along the polar axis air gap is small and along the interpolar axis or quadrature axis it is maximum air gap is maximum similarly here i am uh, taking up the two pole synchronous machine uh, that means rotor is having two poles one north pole is here and the south pole is here and as the distributed winding dc field winding is being wrapped like this and the flow of current is uh like this so it creates north pole over here and south pole here here we have concentrated winding bound over the poles and creating this as north pole creating this as the south pole but here we are creating north pole over here south pole here and remaining entire periphery is filled with the slots and the conductor dc field winding distributed one also uh, uh a phase is being shown over here and this a phase is having some direction of current in a as well as in a dash similarly here also how that direction is given over here dot as well as cross at a specific location that i'll tell you later now here uh, if i am observing that this is the uh, mmf uh, of field winding because north pole is here south pole is here so flux is emerging out from the north pole and merging Uh, into the south pole so flux loops are like this flux loops are like this so i am showing the direction of field mmf in this way field mmf means ff it is also equal to mmf is always equal to uh, number of turns into current so number of turns in field winding into current flowing through the field winding so this gives me the ff mmf of the field winding and also i should recall you that mmf is equal to flux into reluctance that means the mmf in general i am not uh, talking exactly related to the field mmf but i am telling you mmf is nothing but reason to set the flux but how much flux to be set 
or will be going to set that is dependent on the reluctance of the path the reluctance means the obstacle in the path of the flux that decides the quantity of the flux this is nothing but recollection of what i taught during my magnetic circuits lectures actually reluctance is inversely proportional to the permeance permeance shows the permission to set the flux and reluctance shows that the obstacles in the path of the flux but both are inversely proportional to each other as i am telling this is showing the permission to set the flux this is showing reluctance is showing the obstacle to set the flux and reluctance itself is proportional to the length of medium what do you mean by the medium uh, length of uh, magnetic material through which the flux is setting length of air gap which is being followed to get through the magnetic material and all that so if magnetic material is there and length of air gap is small so reluctance would be less and if length of air gap is large then the reluctance would be large and if length of air gap is large so the permission to set the flux will be less so quantity of flux will be less that way you have the connections amongst this uh, whatever is being here over the circular periphery i am showing it straight on a straight linear manner this is your zero degree over the interpolar axis as i trace out the entire periphery till 2 pi so this is being cut along it and opening it so 0 degree to 2 pi this much periphery i am showing over here as north pole is here so i am assuming that maximum flux density or maximum mmf or maximum flux is residing here and minimum residing here so i would be having a pattern of flux in a positive sinusoidal manner half cycle like this in between 0 to 180 degrees so i would be having ff like this either or uh, bf like this uh, uh, flux density of field winding mmf of the field winding both are coinciding with each other just there is a difference of magnitude so one i am taking highest peak and later i am taking the lower peak bf and here also from 180 degree to 2 pi i would be having a pulse sinusoidal next half cycle of either ff or bf but that is totally related to the south pole so certainly direction of field uh, here due to north pole is this one and here also this one so it is emerging inside merging inside and this is emerging out so one is giving the positive half cycle another is giving the negative half cycle but either of mmf or of bf and also in these conductors there would be induction of the current how it uh, induces this rotor is rotating in this direction as the rotor is rotating so with respect to these conductor rate of change of flux exists rate of change of flux into number of turns gives me the emf quantity which is being induced according to faraday's law if i want to know the direction of those uh, emfs in these conductors i should follow fleming's right hand rule i am just applying it but prior to that as soon as the emfs are induced accordingly currents will be induced in these conductors there would be certain direction of the currents and those currents again say ia current because in armature a winding phase a winding flow of ia, IA current is there as per the load connected to the armature winding ia into number of turns of the armature winding means the phase a winding is having say nar number of turns so nar into i gives me the armature flux fa and what would be its direction that i am telling you just now uh, but starting this to find out the direction of F, uh, mmf of armature i am just going towards the direction of emf according to fleming's right hand rule now rotor is rotating as i said like this in this direction so if i am considering rotor is stationary so the direction of conductor of the stator winding is rotating in an anticlockwise direction this concept i told you priorly in my synchronous machines previous lectures so direction of the stator conductor is in this anticlockwise direction so while i am applying the fleming's right hand rule i'll be keeping my thumb in this direction so conductor will be kept under uh, like this means conductor speed is being shown or velocity is being shown in this direction this i am taking the direction of the field flux because this conductor is under the impact of north pole and north pole's direction is giving the flux like this so i am taking component of it so i am having the direction of field component like this 
so this particular uh, middle finger is giving me the direction of emf and it is inward so along the conductor it is inward what does this mean this end back end is positive polarity front end is negative polarity this is the direction of the emf so current would be flowing from back end to front end in this direction hence dot is shown similarly this conductor is under the impact of south pole so it would be having the cross so current is flowing in this a winding like this and going inside so i would be having the current loop like this and according to right hand thumb rule due to this phase a winding's current i would be having the mmh direction perpendicular to this particular plane of winding and it is in the left side of mine so fa would be having this direction and this fa and ff are having a an angle theta in between them right now what happens now this fa how much fa to be set is totally dependent on the reluctance of the path now here uh, conductors are like this a and a dash current is flowing like this direction of ff is fa is this one so here it is completing its path Uh, MMF is having the loop, or the flux armature phi a flux loop are like this, like this. So these flux are having the reluctance due to this air gap because here it is finding this much air gap. Here also, here also. So this much air gap it is finding in its path, large length of air gap. That means uh, MMF set would be less, or flux set would be less here because of the location of. rotor with respect to armature mmf like this is there that's why but here same everything is there only the shape of or the periphery of the rotor is different but fa is also having the same direction fa is also having an angle theta with that of ff but now it is finding the lesser air gap and everywhere wherever fa is directed there it would be having the same air gap length uniform air gap length so there won't be the variation of mmf's quantity because no air gap's length is changing here what will happen as i said that omega s is uh, the di rotational direction of conductor so here also this conductor is rotating in this direction so this theta is going to change between ff and ff all the time so and as it changes here also it is changing here at both the places in cylindrical rotor construction also theta is going to vary here also theta is going to vary but here theta's value doesn't affect the quantity of fa but here theta's value will affect the quantity of fa because through that path where the fa is setting or through that path whatever is the uh, angle between ff and fa that matters what is the quantity of our, uh, air gap length and that air gap length will affect the quantity of mmf because here you can observe it so uh, non uniform air gap affects the armature mmf's quantity uniform air gap doesn't cause the change in ff everywhere it would be same so the difference i have written in this manner in cylindrical rotor machine due to uniform air gap the permeance or reluctance i should say permeance or reluctance offered to armature mmf fa is independent of theta whereas in salient pole permeance offered to armature mmf is dependent on theta i should say so this is all the base for um, armature reaction salient pole machines model requires these basics so it is a base to understand all those things what i declared right now so please try to understand all the concepts of electrical engineering uh, please uh, do like my video and try to subscribe the channel and uh, suggest your friends also and uh, please go into or embedded into the depth of electrical engineering concepts thank you